city she has pursued an executive program in international businesses from iim ahmedabad ms rishti has worked in various areas as coo project coordinator market research officer in various institutions in texas currently she is the ceo at nangavi chromatography solutions mumbai she has expertise in various fields including life sciences quality assurance research marketing strategic business planning business development hplc and so on we are pleased to have such a versatile personality among us today we will now start with the session participants are requested to keep their camera and mic off if you have any questions you can put your questions in the chat box our guest will address your queries at the end of the session thank you over to you srishti ma'am uh, ma'am you are on mute thank you tanvi for uh, such a <laughs> good introduction um, students uh, as we as tanvi has uh, done the introduction my name is srishti and uh, today we will i will just be running through some of uh, the concepts and uh, some applications of gas chromatography uh, if you have any questions please feel free to type in the chat box i'd be more than happy to answer them on the way while we are uh, discussing also uh, you can if you have some questions which you think would be suitable for after the session that is also okay um all right with any further ado i will just start Tanvi, I just wanted to check with you if you are able to see my screen. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, today I'm going to talk about gas chromatography as an analytical tool and its applications. So this is going to be uh, what we are going to talk about today on a prima facie level. Okay, let's start with what is chromatography. I'm assuming that everybody has at least heard of this word chromatography. Uh, let me just simplify it for you. Chromatography is a physical method of separation. Okay, it is basically meaning to separate that distributes components of a mixture into. It basically separates. components of a mixture between stationary phase and the mobile phase okay literally the way it says the mobile phase is the thing that moves so in case of gas chromatography it would be in case of gas chromatography the mobile phase is gas and the stationary phase is a column we will talk about it further in this session okay so in in concise chromatography is a separation technique so what is this gas chromatography used for right so especially uh, since we are all from the life science field from the biotech field uh, let's try and understand what exactly is gc and what is it used for it is used to separate chromatography hai matlab it is definitely going to be used for separation now after you separate these individual components from a mixture with the help of a detector in gas chromatography you can identify so as an example you are um, looking to identify um, some some perfume is there and you feel here maybe this perfume has some um neem oil okay and then you run it onto a gc and you are able to identify let's take a little more recent example in when during this covid period we've all extensively been using these uh, sanitizers yeah so in the sanitizers you can identify whether the sanitizer is ethanol based or isopropyl alcohol based with the help of gc okay after you identify you can purify the individual components 
and you can also quantify each individual component. Again, a more recent example of the hand sanitizers. So um, a lot of during this COVID period, you know, you you see so many of these sanitizers har jagah par. Right? Sometimes you're wondering, is this even like a good sanitizer? Is it even effective against um, all this virus, bacteria, all of those things? So the FDA sent out that um, sanitizer is effective. It has if it has seventy percent ethanol or seventy percent isopropyl alcohol. Any kind of alcohol should be seventy percent. So you take you went to a store, um, you get some sanitizer, you run it onto the GC, and you are able to quantify ki bhai mere sanitizer mein 70% alcohol hai ya nahi if it is there then it is a good and effective sanitizer against covid virus so with the help of gc you can separate you can identify you can purify and quantify each individual component in a mixture any questions just keep on adding on to the chat box okay Okay, so types of chromatography. Uh, we've read a lot of types of chromatography, especially I'm assuming that all of you all have done paper chromatography in 12th standard or something like that. Uh, you would have at least heard of HPLC, high pressure liquid chromatography and gas chromatography, right? There are also a lot of other types of chromatography, but today we are going to specifically talk about Gas chromatography. So then, uh, as we had spoken earlier, gas chromatography may the mobile phase is a gas, which interacts with the stationary phase, which is a column, okay, and enables this mobile phase and uh, interaction with the sample. That is what actually determines कि भाई किस आह किस लेवल से सेपरेशन विल हैपन, ओके आह नाउ लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड दैट गैस क्रोमेटोग्राफी इज मेनली यूज्ड फॉर बोलेटाइल मिक्सचर्स एंड सेपरेशन ऑफ बोलेटाइल मिक्सचर इनटू इंडिविजुअल कंपोनेंट्स, ओके आह वी लेटर ऑन वी विल आल्सो टॉक अबाउट व्हाट कैन क्वालिफाई एस अ गु other types of uh, analytical techniques. So for a sample to be suitable to be analyzed on gas chromatography, it requires to be uh, composed of some volatile components. Okay. Uh, so far, any questions? Now let's move forward. Um, so we were talking about what exactly is gas chromatography. Moving on to the applications and uses of gas chromatography. Okay. So uh, as we spoke earlier, you can identify, you can check purity, which is quantification. Um, specifically, it's a qualitative or quantitative analysis. Qualitative in literal sense, it means whether it is present or not. As an example, okay, let's just stick to the hand sanitizers mixture uh, example, and we can talk about a little more, uh, few other examples a little more into the lecture. So qualitative, whether so now when these sanitizers started coming in, no? so some there was so much demand in the market that quite a few other um, new entrants came in. A lot of them were like you know, uh, not so good quality hand sanitizers. Some of them were like completely bogus, okay? So some of the not so good quality uh, hand sanitizers come manufacturers, they started using uh, not a very good quality of ethanol, okay? So just stick with me for a little bit. I, this is quite interesting, you know, um, what I'm talking about. So. In essence, hand sanitizer is made up of ethanol for hand, okay? They use ethanol, uh, which is used from distillation. Now, uh, 
it's basically sugar just uh, it's distillation then they uh, you know and you understand sugar fermentation and then distillation us distillation me say they specifically collect fractions of ethanol and that ethanol is used for hand sanitizers at the end of the day hand sanitizer is a topical formulation which is used for your skin okay so it is uh, regulated by the fda which is the government body uh, similar to fda is also the same agency that regulates your medicines hmm? uh now in some of the when this covid ka demand rose exponentially for hand sanitizers some other players also entered the market when these some of the other you know they are just trying to make a quick buck usme they are using not the food grade ethanol but they started using you know a chemical um by product ethanol so that started that used to have traces of other chemicals so if a pharmaceutical process is going on api manufacturing usme se a little bit of ethanol comes out as a by product or as like a waste product they were using this ethanol in your in manufacturing of hand sanitizers that is why you would um, you know smell carry some sanitizers just sanitizers just smell kind of weird the reason is because they have uh, some of the not so good components so if you want to find out if that a certain hand sanitizer has uh dmso or uh, hexane or toluene which are some of the very carcinogenic and bad um chemicals that can be present in the bad wala ethanol source you can run it through a gc and find out if your hand sanitizer has any toxic chemicals or not okay so first part is qualitative so if you want to find out if your hand sanitizer is made using the food grade ethanol or a industrial grade ethanol you can run it through gc and find it out so it helps in the qualitative analysis second part is quantitative analysis okay so again going back to the hand sanitizer example so whether it is food grade or it is um, industrial grade ethanol sometimes so, during the manufacturing of ethanol itself uh, some other alcohols may be present because at the end of the day it's a natural fermentation process so some other alcohols such as methanol can be present but the food but the regulatory agencies are very specific about how much of methanol which is again a toxic alcohol very close to ethanol just a carbon uh, atom is missing so how much of methanol is permitted in uh, uh, in hand sanitizers that is laid down by the fda so up to 1 up to 10 ppm of methanol is permitted in your hand sanitizers okay so you can run it again you can take the hand sanitizer run it on gc and find out how much of methanol or any other toxic chemical is present if it is below a certain limit then it is okay but if it has very high like even uh, even if your sanitizer has like 30 40 ppm of methanol it is not a good sanitizer okay because it has a lot of other toxic chemicals like methanol so in concise gas chromatography can help in qualitative as well as quantitative analysis okay so other applications of qualitative analysis if you just want to very quickly check the quality of wine that your uh, the manufacturers are manufacturing the carcinogen the food and water they have some uh, carcinogens inevitably that are present in our food that can be detected uh, the petrol how pure is the petrol when the indian government is purchasing um, gas or petrol or crude oil from saudi arabia or wherever else 
or Iran or wherever else, they are using gas chromatography for its purity analysis. Um, if you want to check if your organic food has any pesticides or is it uh, really organic, for any of these applications, GC can be used. So considering that uh, the audience today is mainly uh, the biotech audience, uh, which will either be entering the pharma or the biopharma industry majorly in the near future, uh, applications of gas chromatography are in this specific industry are in front of you. So in literal sense, uh, they're using it everywhere, whether it is to check if the API has any residual solvent, um, because when you make this API, right? I believe everybody understands API is act active pharmaceutical ingredient. The paracetamol in the crocin tablet is called API. So the API, when they make the paracetamol, they put five, six, you know, solvents and they give it an acid wash, they give it a base wash, and then they blend it together after all of that, maybe they do some uh, specific uh, inorganic chemistry reactions. And then at the end, the final paracetamol or any other API, metformin or any other API is formed. So during that manufacturing, after the entire API is made, they just want to check if any other residual solvent is there. Right? Residual solvent matlab, thoda traces of that solvent is present in the API. Whether it is present or not, wo ke liye, they will use gas chromatography. Uh, nutraceuticals, vitamin E can be analyzed using um, gas chromatography. Uh, then a um, lot of herbal Ayurvedic drugs, diagnostic labs are using it, public testing laboratories are using it. Of course, in colleges and research institutes, they use gas chromatography. And then there are some non-pharmaceutical industries. They also use gas chromatography. If you want to check the quality of the perfume or the composition of your perfume, there are some agrochemicals which are sprayed like pesticides or anything. So they want to make sure that they have a certain amount of um, um, actives when they are spraying these pesticides. Um, we spoke about the petrochemical industry, food processing industry as well. Uh, we spoke about the organic pesticides being found in organic, the claimed so-called organic food. That is where they are used, um, extensively used within India for spices manufacturing and testing. Uh, as we all know, uh, India exports a large variety of spices in the world, to the world. So if you want to check, uh, if a spices manufacturer wants to check, okay, if Baatsha Masala makes Pao Bhaji Masala today and they make the Pao Bhaji Masala blend next year or they want to check, yare, is, my, is the quality of my masala similar to my previous batches or not? They will run it through a headspace gas chromatography to check the volatile component. The spice, the reason why these spices give out that aromatic flavor, you walk into the house and you smell pao bhaji it is being made is because of the volatile oils that are there in that masala. So clove oil, clove has, um, clove when it is heated, the volatile component, the clove oil, you know, gets into the air and you smell it and you realize, this is pao bhaji is being cooked. So these exporters or manufacturers, they want to make sure that uh, it's of a certain quality and the way they check consistency in their manufacturing or in the export is using gas chromatography. Okay. Okay. Any questions so far? So if you all have any questions, please feel free to start typing in the box. Uh, sometimes I will uh, talk about examples that are relevant and you may have heard about. Sometimes they might be examples that you're hearing for the first time. So just feel free to let me know. Okay. 
सो इतना सारा एप्लीकेशन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट हियर इधर यूज होता है स्पाइसिस में भी यूज होता है पेट्रोल में भी यूज होता है एवरीवेयर इट इज यूज सो लेट्स ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट एग्जैक्टली इज गैस क्रोमेटोग्राफी एंड हाउ डज इट हाउ कैन वन सिंगल इंस्ट्रूमेंट डू सच अ वाइड रेंज ऑफ एनालिसिस ओके सो द फर्स्ट नॉब दैट यू सी द फर्स्ट बॉक्स दैट यू सी इज अ कैरियर गैस ओके there are carrier gases the role of the carrier gas is to just move through the entire system okay now the carrier gas can be nitrogen there are three types of uh, four types of gases that are predominantly used in gas chromatography it is nitrogen which is the very inert zero air which is air of very high pure quality without water or i mean without any humidity or any other dust particles or microbes okay third is helium and the fourth is hydrogen okay so hydrogen is used uh, to light a flame in the detector which we will talk about a little later helium and nitrogen these two are the carrier gases okay so the cylinder that you see on your screen that is uh, that is either nitrogen or helium and that will act as a carrier gas then you see a gas flow regulator you can control the flow rate you want it to be at the flow rate of 0.3 ml per minute or 2 ml per minute or whatever is the decided flow rate us rate se the carrier gas which is nitrogen or helium will enter the gas chromatography system okay the third thing that you see is a sample as we spoke about earlier not all samples will qualify to be uh, analyzed on gas chromatography you will require uh, a bol a sample that has some kind of volatile component to it okay. that is the basis on which the separation will happen so the sample it is injected in the syringe which is put through a port okay so with the help of a, every i believe everybody pretty much everybody has now got their uh, covid vaccine shot there was a syringe and then there was a needle that entered your arm right so that needle is the entry point of the injector port so now let's uh, after the sample is injected it is actually injected into the path of the mobile phase so it is injected into the path of nitrogen or into the path of helium those two gases take the uh, particular sample and they run it through the gc column okay the gc column is a capillary column what i mean when i say a capillary column is it's like we i'll show it to you as well um it's like a round okay let me just show it to you first okay. just just a minute okay just a minute i'm just going to bring it just a minute i'm going to just go and 
get it. Just hold on for a minute, please. Um, let me just show it in the pictures because it's easier. Uh, so the column itself is going to look something like this. Okay, It's a wound up, very, very thin, about uh, 0.01 mm. Okay, that kind of a fine um, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 millimeters is the diameter of this tube. It is placed inside the gas chromatography column component like this. Okay. And this column is actually the place where the separation happens. Okay. So, inside the column is where the separation actually occurs. Now, the column looks like this. Okay, it's a 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.03 mm is the diameter of this column. Okay, and that is where the separation actually happens. After the gas has taken the sample, took it to the column, the separation has happened. Then the individual components, after being separated, enter the detector. Okay. In the case of a gas chromatography detector, it's a flame ionization detector. So a flame ionization detector means that the hydrogen gas that we had spoken about earlier, that lights up the flame inside the detector. So that, it's actually like a flame. How there is a candle, yeah, for gas, burner, ka flame. It's a flame like that. There's a flame. Individual components that are separated in the column enter the detector, where in the flame, they attain a certain ionized state. You understand what is ionized state? Ionized state is they give out a certain, they emit a certain energy. Each individual molecule has a predetermined energy, ionization state energy, that is captured by the detector. And that energy that is absorbed, that is screen, that is seen on the screen as a chromatogram. And then you do the analysis. Any questions on this? Any questions on this? Because this is just, just a little, um, the concept is important because the further part of this lecture is going to be based on the principles of what we just spoke about. Okay. All right, I will continue with, um, I will continue with this. If you have any questions, just feel free to Put it in the chat box, okay? Again, going back, the carrier gas, such as nitrogen or helium, is taken up into the system using a gas flow regulator that decides, with the help of which you can decide how much of it should enter the column, uh, the sample, which is a perfume or a wine or a food uh, thing or a hand sanitizer, is put inside the column, um, which has some volatile component inside the column is where the separation actually physically occurs. 
and which is then put into the detector, which in the case of gas chromatography detector is a flame ionization detector. And that detector may individual components enter, they get uh, ionized using the hydrogen flame, the, that ionization is captured that ionization energy is captured by the detector. The detector then gives out a signal to the computer, which gives you some kind of a chromatogram that you see on your screen, okay? This is what a column looks, GC column looks like. This is how it is placed inside the GC compo chamber. Uh, this is what actually is inside the GC column. Uh, the two gray walls that you see are the are the walls of the column. They are the stainless, tube, stainless steel or glass tubings. Um, the solid phase inside is either silica or diametaceous earth or any kind of other packing. The separation happens not between the two blue balls, but inside the white balls that you see, inside the blue balls. That is where the separation actually occurs. Okay. So this is the same thing, just going a little more into detail. The sample injector is, uh, the sample that is put into the GC instrument is usually one to three microliters. Nitrogen or helium is a carrier gas. Inside the column is where the, uh, inside the column is where the actual separation occurs. The hydrogen flame that you see, the detector is basically going to pick up the ionization energy, going to put in information into going to take the signals and put it into the computer unit from where you see the chromatogram. Okay. So um, earlier you would actually put in a single sample with a single syringe. Okay. Now all instruments have an auto sampler. Basically it will be a small vial. I will just show it to you. You put in, you're putting you will put in all your samples into the vials and you can set the timer onto the system. Uh, after every analysis, a new vial will be picked up automatically by the sampler and the analysis can happen. So as an example, you can set the analysis on Monday morning, come back on Wednesday evening and you would have probably completed like 30, 35 samples. Or if you're gone for the weekend, you just put in all the details on Friday afternoon and you come back Monday and all your data is ready. Great, fantastic. <laughs> okay, so um, that is how it works. Now let's talk, okay, any questions related to GC? Okay, now let's move on to the gas chromatic. Now let's move on to the gas chromatography headspace part of it. So for the auto sampler to work, you know, do you see that all of them have to be like complete miscible homogeneous liquids, right? But sometimes uh, you don't have the time or sometimes your samples are not, um, they're just not suitable to turn into homogeneous liquids. So if it's a homogeneous liquid, the injector needle that we had seen earlier, right here, can just enter the vial, pick up one to three microliters and run through the system. What if your sample was from Bhaji Masala from, uh, from Badsha? Okay, can you turn it into a liquid, a homogeneous liquid? Like you'll have to dissolve it into like so many different complex samples, uh, solutions or chemicals to make it into a solution. What can you do instead? Is it possible to just um, do analysis of Badsha Pao Bhaji Masala as it is? So the answer is yes, you can. You can put it into a headspace vial. Okay. Uh, so let's try and understand what exactly is headspace and what is gas chromatography headspace. And how can Pao Bhaji Masala from Badsha be analyzed using gas chromatography without having to do any sample preparation. So uh, from a complex sample such as palm bhaji masala, volatile components such as club oil or um, 
any of those uh, wool, cinnamon oil, all of those things can be extracted and isolated in the head space or the gas portion of the sample vial. Okay, there's a certain vial and that is how you can do it. Then the sample gas in the head space is, in, is injected into the GC system. So what happens is you take that Baksha Masala. Okay. All right, let me do this. You see the full evaporation technique? That yellow bead that you see, that is your Baksha Masala. It's a 15 ml vial. You will put in less than 10 mg of the sample, which will be your Baksha Masala, Pao Bhaji Masala. You put that Pambhaji Masala in this gas GC vial, cap it, headspace vial. Ko. What? And then you heat it. Like this is all, by now the instrument does it entirely. You don't have to heat it separately. But you heat it. And when you heat it, the Pambhaji Masala may say whatever club oil, cinnamon oil, eucalyptus oil, whatever else is there, you know. Uh, all those spices, ka volatile components, will keep on floating in the headspace vial. The solid component, okay, that will also, the composition of which will change. So the yellow dot, which was a big one, turns into a brown dot with all the volatile components lying around in that vial. That is, you know, that is the first point that we see here. Volatile components from a complex sample can be extracted from non-volatile components and isolated in the headspace or the gas portion of the sample vial. Image that we saw here, full evaporation technique is what is the first point right here. Then only this red particles that you see only these red particles can be injected into the system, into the gas chromatography system. That is what is spoken about here. And a sample of the gas in the head space is injected into a GC system for separation of all volatile components. Okay, so that is the application of head space. So uh, this is on the left that you see, the entire unit is a GC instrument, the detector, the inlet, this the top portion that you see up here uh, on top of the system, the that is the auto sampler. This entire system is there. The sample will go inside, column is there, detector is there. Now, the another instrument equipment that you see on the right, that entire is called a headspace auto sampler. In that, you can put in these individual headspace vials, okay? And with, they are heated, that uh, Pambhaji Masala means all the volatile components come up, comes up, uh, it is taken up again by another injector, then with the help of a transfer line, it goes from the headspace auto sampler into the GC instrument. Again, it enters the inlet, it enters the column, that is where the separation actually occurs, and then it is detected into the detector and put out as a chromatogram. Okay. Are we are we understanding? Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, just put them here, okay? If you have any questions, doubts, anything. Going back to the slideshow. So, uh, that is how you can use a headspace to do analysis of complex samples. Okay, now let's try and understand what are some of these complex samples? What is the principle behind it? Okay, so if there was Pao Bhaji Masala, you will use the full evaporation technique. Okay. The disadvantage to this is your original sample is going to be completely destroyed. So therefore it is a destructive technique. Okay. Sometimes you want to just, um, okay, 
again coming back to the hand sanitizer example okay you there are two types of hand sanitizers one is the liquid complete liquid uh, which you can use in the auto sampler and then there are times then there is also this gel based hand sanitizer so you can use uh, headspace vial to check the quality of the uh, gel based hand sanitizer how do you do that so in the headspace vial it's a 15 ml vial you fill maybe 5 ml okay of the headspace vial with your gel based sanitizer okay 1 ml actually 1 ml or 2 ml is good in this case then so the gray portion that you see on your screen will be your gel based hand sanitizer okay uske andar the white portions that you see the volatile analytes that you see here, okay that is your ethanol and methanol and isopropyl alcohol or any other volatile component which is present in a non volatile sample okay the sample the gel sanit gel hand sanitizer is a non volatile sample uske andar there are some volatile components that are mixed okay when you heat it so you put it into a head space vial you put it into this head space ka auto sampler you heat it thoda sa you can decide what temperature for how much period of time etc okay so as an example i will uh, heat this um, hand gel hand sanitizer for uh, maybe 30 seconds at uh, 60 degrees celsius okay or 70 degrees celsius which i know is the uh, evaporation point the boiling point of, uh, sorry the boiling point of ethanol okay so once you do that all that ethanol and all other volatile components have gathered on top of the vial the gel and other parts of the hand sanitizer are still going to be niche in the vial okay then it is injected into the system and column ke through pass okay detector mein pata chal jayega ki how much methanol is there how much ethanol is there etc okay then let's talk about a third kind of an example which is a uh, perfume okay so if you had a perfume sample there are some volatile okay then there are some heavy molecules which will still remain in liquid phase only okay they are oil based components so they don't they are oil based they are volatile but they don't become volatile until like 270 280 300 350 degrees celsius okay so in something in a complex sample like a perfume there is a wide range of volatile components okay so there's a wide range of volatile components uh you want to analyze maybe some parts of it not all or you want to analyze all parts of it so let me show you this so if you were if you had if you wanted to analyze all parts of a perfume sample okay you would take the entire because it's a homogeneous liquid you can just directly put it into the auto sampler right happy you can put it into the auto sampler it's a homogeneous liquid okay if you put the entire perfume sample into the gas chromatography auto sampler everything that is present in that sack perfume will show up okay so you will see a lot of peaks okay sometimes you just want you but you don't want to see the entire thing right sometimes you only want to see some specific because there is a base note then there is a top note and there is a body into a perfume okay okay let me explain how does the perfume work okay when you spray a perfume sabse pehle you smell something what you smell in the first you know few microseconds is the top note of a perfume okay then there is a body jo do teen ghante tak rahega so if you apply it like right before going on a 
डिनर पार्टी देन वेन यू जो आपको स्मेल आती है जब आप लगाते हैं दैट इज द टॉप नोट वो विद इन लाइक मे बी हार्डली लाइक एन आवर एंड द टॉप नोट का वोलोटाइल कंपोनेंट है ऑल वेपराइज okay so if you meet somebody 2 hours after the party they still smell that they still smell your perfume but they don't smell what you smell what you could smell the first time when you put it kyunki unko sirf body ka smell aayega not the top note and then there is a base which kapde dhulne ke baad bhi second day also you can smell are kapde dhulne ke baad there my perfume is so good abhi bhi smell aa rahi hai so that is the body so the top body and base are basically the three types of chemicals the top are the high the top notes are made up of the highly volatile components the body is mildly volatile and the base that we talk about they are the heavy molecules that remain in liquid phase throughout even kapde dhulne ke baad jo dusra din smell aata hai those are that smell is because of those chemicals so suppose in your a perfume manufacturer and you are like are i just want to change the top note of my perfume not the pura perfume mujhe change nahi karna hai if you want to do the entire perfume ka quality analysis you will use a auto sampler direct injection jo humne baat kiya tha pura ka pura homogeneous sample of perfume we will inject you will see the figure 1 that is use that is what you see on your screen the entire perfume ka chromatogram or you are a perfume manufacturer you only want to change the top note you are like mujhe sirf wo jo pehle smell aati hai na usko thoda sa change karna hai ya analyze karna hai for that you run it into a head space vial okay the most volatile components will turn up on your screen okay okay are you understanding because you own because your peak of interest is only that so you what i'm trying to tell you here is sometimes with the same sample if you your purpose of sample analysis can determine if it will be a direct injection or if it will be a head space injection okay are you understanding because th- this is thoda you know it's a good concept it's important to understand okay great and thank you for your feedback uh, especially when i'm talking in front of a screen it's really helpful to have uh, this feedback ki samajh mein aa raha hai nahi samajh mein aa raha what is happening okay so again going back to this presentation um Okay. There is head space based on your sample. You will decide if it should be a head space injection or a direct injection. Okay. Now uh, let's move on to one more, one step up of the gas chromatography. Okay. So the thing about flame, I the first uh, instrument detail that we saw used a flame ionization detector. If you remember. which works on the hydrogen flame ka basis abhi what happens is for samples that are very small in quantity you know then it is very difficult for then it is very difficult for the flame ionization detector to detect very small quantity so if your sample is in very minute quantity or um, let me give you an example okay so just just a minute so if um okay so if okay all right all right if you wanted to check if your uh, organic food produce is kabhi kabhi kya karte hain you know uh, is that kabhi kabhi 
they will spray very little amount of pesticide hmm? and still you know call it as a call it as a um, organic food produce this is specifically true in case of high value um, spices such as saffron okay saffron kesar we all know is very very expensive right uh, the plant itself flowers in two and a half years okay so if they use if they don't use any pesticides or any insecticide or anything then two and a half years ke baad what if the plant goes bad you know if there is a pest infestation and then the farmer loses a lot of money okay so in cases of these kind of high value uh, materials they will use very minute amount of pesticide and then they will acche se you know uh, do a, another chemical process to get rid of it so if you were to run uh, this kind of a sample this kind of a gas um, saffron sample into your regular gc okay with a flame ionization detector it will show that it has no pesticides at all but because the quantity of pesticide is so small for the ionization energy to be attained for that uh, chemical it needs to have some uh, quantity okay so then the main that is where instruments such as gcms mass spectroscopy comes into picture everything else is the same okay you see the head space sampler you see the injector you see the capillary column everything is the same just instead of the fid flame ionization detector this will enter into mass spectroscopy detector now let's try and understand what is the principle behind mass spectroscopy uh in very simplistic terms it detects the mass of individual moieties that come out of the column once when it is detecting the mass of individual components we all know that all molecule all uh, chemicals and molecules have their own molecular mass pehle se there is a library in mass spectroscopy photometer mass spectroscopy that uh, has ki bhai if it is a molecular weight of 132 then it can be 12345 then based on that you it is very much easier to figure out what exactly what component it is i will just use this as a this is just as an introduction i will not go into too much detail this is a slightly more advanced uh, instrument today but in the near future we will see more a lot of gcs would have been replaced with gcms instruments it's a lot more sophisticated mainly used for very small quantities uh, of samples to be detected okay so uh, again any questions so anushka is asking in gchs only peak of interest can show no anushka so in our example uh, the reason why only the peak of interest was seen was because it was the most volatile component of the perfume sample let me go back to that example again what happened in this case anushka was that in this perf i could have either ran the perfume as a whole if i run it as a whole all components of my perfume will pop up okay so as an example i am using germanium oil rose oil uh, with some uh, dmso solvent uh, coupled with ethanol which is you know uh, the base carrier so all these volatile components are dissolved or made miscible into the ethanol and that is how the perfume is made so when i put a direct injection sabhi kuch ethanol dms rose oil germanium oil sab kuch aa jayega but actually for me i only want if i only want to check rose oil ka one volatile component that 
अगर मुझे इफ दैट इज वॉट इज माई एक्चुअल माई वर्क राइट नाउ देन आई विल पुट इट इन टू जी सी एच एस सो द सेम परफ्यूम इफ आई वॉन्ट टू चेक की भाई बैच टू बैच कंसिस्टेंसी है या नहीं आई विल यूज डायरेक्ट इंजेक्शन टूडे आई मेक अ परफ्यूम थ्री मंथ्स लेटर आई मेक अ परफ्यूम सिक्स मंथ्स लेटर आई मेक अ परफ्यूम ऑल ऑफ देम शुड स्मेल द सेम दे शुड हैव द सेम कॉम्पोजिशन वो अगर मुझे देखना है तो मैं डायरेक्ट इंजेक्ट करूंगी and if i want to do some rnd or quality control only of a certain component out of that entire perfume then i will put it into gchs so peak of interest dono mein same hai same jagah par bhi hai hmm? but the gchs i can no I, wo sara mera noise nikal jata hai jo cheezon mein mujhe interest nahi hai wo main nahi dekhti Are you understanding, Anushka? Thank you. If you have question, like if you don't understand, okay, then please type here or uh, unmute yourself and ask. Feel free to ask me your exact question. Okay. We'll move further. um so okay so now if i put you in front of a gc instrument uske aage bhi to how will you end up going further okay so first part is you have to develop a method so when you are developing a method you do a lot of study again i will not get into too much detail here uh the best way to do method development is to try and get just try it on the system okay you get a peak you tweak it thoda uh, thoda flow rate badhayenge thoda uh, temperature upar niche karenge that is how you will actually figure out hmm? so now uh, another very important part of this uh, we spoke about a perfume ko aise direct injection dalenge ya head space mein dalenge all of that so how do you understand ki bhai is my sample suitable for gc or not that is the first question ki not all samples are suitable to be analyzed on gc uh this i hope will help you get some idea of what can or cannot work so if it is a volatile sample and if it is a hydrophobic sample um uh, wahan se that is your zero or x y axis ke upar if you were to see those are usually your uh, hydrocarbons and essential oil essential oils matlab all this rose oil germanium oil petrichor oil all of those oils okay then uh, some of the alcohols that you see they are not very volatile and they are fairly polar okay they are miscible with water uh, ethanol or ipa ipa ke upar if you go butanol wagera they are not okay? so based on this matrix you can understand based on polarity and volatility if a certain sample is suitable for gc analysis or if it has to go for any other analysis so let me talk about alcohol uh, sanitize some applications so as we spoke earlier if you want to check um, the if if you want to check the quality of your sanitizer ki bhai 70% hai ya nahi then you can use gc that is quantitative analysis sometimes you want to check the impurity if you want to check methanol content present in your hand sanitizer which is which in this case is a impurity methanol is the impurity that also you can do using gas chromatography we've been talking itna detail me about a perfume right so uh, anushka if i run gc of a perfume pura perfume to itna sara aa jayega par agar mujhe sirf limonene mein interest hai hmm? i don't want to get anything it's only limonene or if i only want to get the top notes of a certain some other thing i can choose to go for head space to minimize this disturbance for wine if you want to check ki uh, so 
nowadays wines are becoming uh, quite a big industry in india also so if sula wine yards or fratelli wine yards or whichever they want to check ki bhai uh because it's a it's wine is made up of natural produce which is the grapes kabhi barish zyada hui kabhi barish kam hui sometimes you know all of those so many environmental factors will impact the quality of grapes that in turn will affect the quality or affect the quality of wine that is made in that particular year right so but they as a wine manufacturer they still have to ensure that they have fairly similar you know uh, quality it cannot be very different so they can do you know they can tweak their production manufacturing process fermentation ka time ya fermentation ka temperature whatever they can tweak those based on you know uh, how how they can control the final product to do that they use gas chromatography extensively okay so have we recently you know heard kere like maybe 20 years ago uh, your parents uh, were only using steel ka dabbas and glass kaanch ka dabba there was no or kaanch ka bottle there was nothing plastic later on in the past 7 8 years uh, with extensive use of polymer plastic they have re- realized that a lot of chemicals are leached into the components that are stored in plastic containers so if you are using uh, paratha uh, your plastic dabba to store your paratha and heating it up in the microwave the plastic releases a certain bpa bisphenol a that enters your food and when we consume it there is, then we see a real lot of uh, hormone disruption is happening so much cancer is happening blah 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 all of that is caused by some or the other leached chemicals from your plastic dabba or bottle into your food and you are ingesting it without even realizing it so one such is phthalates another such is bisphenol a bpa or bisphenol a so these can be detected all these toxic toxic chemicals can be detected using gas chromatography and after this study they have been promoting the use of steel or metal or glass bottles extensively so this is an example that we see on our screen uh, a high quantity of bpa bisphenol a was found in plastic containers um using gas chromatography okay uh this is where i uh conclude my what i wanted to talk about <laughs> and i leave this forum open for um this is where i leave the forum open for questions so i've got one question um which says the gchs intensifies the peak of interest or cancels out disturbance so anushka what gchs primarily does is it can help in selecting what sample enters your system okay that is why it can cancel out a lot of disturbance okay which is actually other samples it is not disturbance but it's mainly other samples for which you are not looking to check at the moment so just to reiterate anushka agar main manufacturer hu if i am in the quality control department of the perfume manufacturing unit and if i want to check ki mera ye wala perfume aur pichle batch ka perfume same bana hai ya nahi then i will use direct injection but if i am in the r and d team of the same perfume manufacturing company and if i want to check ki main top note kaise badlu taki smell lambe samay tak top note ka chale then i will use head space okay so it dis- it removes all the other samples that enter the system then i can figure out ki bhai ye this is how i can modify my product 
I will move on to the next question. Kritika ka. Why um, only ethane related products like ethyl acetate have the highest peak in the graph? Uh, so good question, Kritika. What happens is it's not ethane related, rather based on the composition of individual uh, components that are present in a mixture the area under the curve of that particular component will be greater which means let's go to uh, okay let's go to this okay in this chromatogram of a vine that was injected directly into the system. Uh, two, which is ethanol, we see like a very broad and wide peak. Okay, so uska area under the curve. Okay, the area that is. I hope you understand what is area under the curve. Uska area under the curve is greater as compared to first, which is sulfur dioxide. Okay, so, which means ki the quantity of ethanol present in your wine is a lot greater as compared to the quantity of sulfur dioxide or methyl formate or acetic acid. Okay. So the quantity of um, depending on wo wo sample ke andar kis cheese ka quantity kitna hai that is why bo wale peaks bade rahenge as compared to other peaks. Okay. But very good question, Kritika. Any other questions? Yes, Harsh, your question is true. Uh, GCHS shows result for highly volatile compounds. Yes. So the high, jitna zada highly volatile compound hai, wo GCHS pe behtar dekhega. Very good question. Harsh is asking, what if we want to change the mid or the lower note of the perfume? You can use it. So what you will do is you will make the change in your sample preparation. So what you will do is you will take your perfume. Okay. If you want to check the top note, okay, which is the highly volatile compound, you will heat it for maybe 10 seconds at 100 degrees Celsius or 60 degrees Celsius. Okay. When you heat it for 10 seconds, uh, only at 60 degrees Celsius, jo highly volatile compounds have upar aage, uska injection ek dal do. So you will get, you know, two or three um, peaks, jo bohat highly volatile hai wahi. For a second, if you want to change the mid note of the perfume, what you do is, you, without, before capping your, GC vial ko cap karte na. Wo cap karne se pehle hi, you heat it for 10 seconds at 60 degrees Celsius. All the highly volatile things have escaped out of the vial. Then you cap your sample. Then from that sample, you heat it for 30 seconds at maybe 120 degrees Celsius or 150 degrees Celsius. Okay. Or you directly heat it at, or what you do is, usse bhi zada reproducible results ke liye. you take your GC vial first wala vial 10 seconds 60 degrees Celsius highly volatile sim, jo components hai, uska chromatogram do. second thing that you do is you take the same GC you take a different GC headspace vial you heat it for 30 seconds uh, or you heat it for like 60 seconds which is one minute at 120 degrees Celsius all the highly volatile and mid-level volatile components will also come up. You run a sample, you run the injection, you will get a chromatogram. 
ना फ्रॉम द सेकेंड क्रोमैटोग्राम जो ज्यादा समय के लिए हीट किया है उसमें से यू सब्रैक्ट द फर्स्ट क्रोमैटोग्राम उस वाले पीक्स को सब्ट्रैक्ट कर दो यू कैन सब्ट्रैक्ट इट वेन यू सब्ट्रैक्ट इट यू ओनली सी द नॉट सो वोलेटाइल कंपोनेंट ऑन योर स्क्रीन हर्षा यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग ओके सेम थिंग यू डू फॉर द थर्ड विच इज द बेज नोट ऑफ द परफ्यूम यू टेक योर हेड स्पेस वायल यू हीट इट फॉर यू नो थ्री मिनिट्स एट टू हंड्रेड डिग्री सेल्सियस ओके वंस यू हीट और मे बी वन फिफ्टी और वन एटी डिग्री टू हंड्रेड इज वेरी हाई ओके यू हीट इट ऑल द हाईली वोलेटाइल एंड द मिड लेवल वोलेटाइल एंड द थर्ड वन ऑल ऑफ दम विल इवेपोरेट ओके बेसिकली ऑल द वोलेटाइल कंपोनेंट दैट आर प्रेजेंट ऑल ऑफ दम विल इवेपोरेट बी इन दैड स्पेस पोर्शन इंजेक्ट इट सब्रैक्ट इट फ्रॉम द पहली वाला दिन That is how you can actually see कौन से कौन से volatile level पे कौन से कौन से components हैं I believe I hope this was helpful हर्ष Yes, the heating plays an important role here in the headspace analysis. Yes, time and temperature both. Okay, great, great. I will. Uh, I have another question. what are the precautions we should take while performing the test uh, simplest for i mean most critical is be aware of your sample if it's a toxic sample uh, be very careful don't touch it with your bare hands wear a mask uh, because all of these are highly volatile components if they are toxic they are going to be very bad for you uh, the quantity sample preparation is very very important so your micro pipetting techniques should be excellent um if you mean to inject uh, one microliter okay and you end up injecting like 1.5 microliter your quantification will go here uh thirdly very important precaution all this is operating at very high temperatures 270 280 you know 320 degree celsius so be very careful do not touch the column compartment do not you know don't touch anything inside the <laughs> gas chromatography system thirdly uh, another very critical precaution is you are going to be using hydrogen which is a highly flammable gas be very careful uh, while changing the cylinder ensure there is no leakage in the pipes or the tubings at any point in time uh, anushka these are the most important precautions that i would say when you are using gas chromatography anything else okay in commercial use uh, can we detect the undisclosed elements in perfume by any particular method yes harsh uh, <laughs> this is uh, perfume analysis is extensively done um, reverse engineering is extensively done for perfumes uh, by people so if there is uh, some company that is making A reputed company that is making perfume. Yes. So if there is a reputed company, as an example, Chanel is making very high quality, expensive perfume. Somebody wants to duplicate it. They will run it through a GCMS mass spectroscopy. They will be able to identify individual components, and then they will try and blend them into a perfume and use it in their products. Okay. Uh, that is the. what is a disrupt not so good application that is used extensively let's talk about a little more um, constructively used by the regulatory bodies that we spoke about if india is you know paying very high amount of money to buy high quality organic saffron from iran okay and we want to make sure ki bhai iske andar kuch bhi pesticide nahi hai then we will be running the indian uh port agencies they have their own quality assurance teams they will be running this um gcms analysis on the imported items sometimes uh you know narcotic drugs are uh, shipped through and 
they come in, they go out. How do you very quickly analyze narcotic drugs? You put it through a gas chromatography or a GCMS system, and you're able to identify. So any kind of illegal activities, even of that sort, are very well controlled by the regulatory bodies using these and highly sophisticated analytical techniques, such as GCMS. Any other questions? I see 71 attendees, so I look forward to some more questions. Any other examples that uh, Paul would want me to talk about? Uh, so what is the most challenging part of gas chromatography? The most challenging part is uh, method development. Okay, so just because you put it in, if you put in the sample, doesn't mean that the output will come. You have to figure out ki what is the best uh, temperature, what is temperature, how much time to do it, uh, flow rate kitna rakhna hai. Uh, that R&D part, the method development part, in my opinion, is the most challenging part of any analytical instrument, but with GC specifically. Okay. Yes, students. Any other examples you want to talk about? Oh, we have another question. Is GC used on airports? Uh, in India, we are not yet having an in house lab at the airports, you know, but in a lot of other countries, US has, Japan has, Europe has, China has. These four or five countries uh, or continents with specific countries inside them, they have these entire set of uh, highly sophisticated instruments placed right at the airport. If somebody is concerned, is, is this person tra involved in drug trafficking? They will just, you know, use a small little filter paper to run through your palms and they will put that sample, they will extract that sample, put it into the GC, make the person wait at the airport itself for three or something hours and do the entire analysis and, you know, they can do this entire thing on the airport itself. Yes, definitely. They are they are used extensively to detect explosives. GC is used to detect explosives on a on a lot of uh, airports, especially the commercial ports or commercial airports. Uh, they are used extensively. Not yet in India. Narcotics, yes, yes. They use it for narcotics and explosives. Not in India yet. They, for India, they still have to take it to a centralized lab. Uh, but on bigger airports like uh, Chicago Airport, they do. Hmm. Kritika, would it be possible for you to unmute yourself and ask me this question so that I can understand this question better? I will first ask Kritika uh, and then I will come back to Mukda's question. Is it possible, Kritika, to unmute? Okay, okay, I understand. So I will just try and understand, uh, I will just try to answer the question the way I have understood. Uh, so if you, so Kritika's question is, Help me understand if I have understood your question correctly. So you are saying, ki, is it possible that only with top note ke perfume? Banai? 
Hmm? If you make a perfume only with top note, within half an hour, you're, you will not be able to smell the perfume at all. So you can make it, but uh, you will not be able to smell the perfume after some time. So, oh, thank you. Thank you for affirming that this is the question. So Kritika, okay, help. Uh, so when you are making a perfume like that, okay, when you are in an enclosed room, there is beach me, me se air freshener jo apne aap dispense hota hai, diwal par se, se, spray bottle. Me se. Okay, that kind of a perfume only has top note. Because the, the purpose of that, you know, room freshener, that is self-dispense, is only to give a very small, slight hint in the room. It doesn't have to be like in your face. So that kind of a perfume will only have a top note. The room freshener does not have a base or a body. It only is made up of top note. Okay, I hope this was uh, helpful. Great, excellent, excellent. Very welcome. Uh, so I will go on to the next question. Mukta is asking, are there any specific precautions required to detect while explosive while detecting explosives through GC? Not really. It I would rather suggest, I would rather say that um, when you're detecting explosives through gas chromatography, even if it is running at very high temperature. Uh, it's probably one of the safest methods, okay, after HPLC. Let me just put this slide on your screen for your context. Okay, all right. So, uh, this slide basically talks about how do you decide if a sample is more suitable for HPLC or for GC, okay. So, uh, some of them will okay so explosive is basically made up of TNT or any kind of a uh, any kind of a highly highly exothermic material okay and usually these exothermic materials are either non-volatile or very mildly volatile Okay, so they are usually done by HPLCs, but the triggering point is the volatile component in these explosives, the one that first catches the fire. Those ones are used for GC. So if you want to detect, uh, if you want to find out whether somebody is carrying an explosive or not, the faster technique will be GC, but a more refined technique will be using HPLC and precautions as such no they are fairly I mean once you're aware that you are looking for explosives you are going to be using when you are doing the sample preparation you are going to be using you know uh, non-flammable solvents and all of that so it's very safe you just have to be careful but it's you can do it without having to be really concerned. Great, great. Okay. Any other questions? Can we detect a particular mixture of drugs and food particles with this analytical technique? Yes. With GC, you can definitely detect a uh, mixture of drugs or mixture of foods. Definitely you can. Um, let me give you some examples. Um, masala, right? Uh, masala, if, if uh, somebody wants to check how expensive is mirchi, you know the red chili powder or if it is kashmiri mirchi or is this this is degi mirchi okay <laughs> for people who are uh, into food and can of the food they will be understanding kashmiri mirchi is um, not so spicy degi mirchi is quite spicy okay which in literal terms means 
कि the capsaicin content in देगी मिर्च is lot higher as compared to कश्मीरी uh, मिर्च the capsaicin content capsaicin is what gives you the tikha that spice the hotness that you see that you experience so uh, if you want to check ki bhai this food has kashmiri uh, mirch ya degi mirch you can use or how much of capsaicin is present you can use gc so in the same way that is just an example but uh, to answer your question harsh you can detect a particular mixture of food and drugs ka particles with this with gc i will move on to the next question uh, is gas chromatography used in forensic testing also yes extensively it is used in forensic testing uh, again just to give you an example if you want to see um, okay if you want to check um how much okay if somebody is drunk driving or if there's a murder taken place and you want to check ki bhai iske andar was this person uh consume has this person consumed any alcohol you take the blood sample you you know do some sample preparation take out all the you know basically you centrifuge the blood sample take out all the particles part of it the plasma may you may mix it with um, another volatile miscible component you run it through gc if you see ethanol pop up in the gas chromatogram therefore this person was intoxicated while he was driving or when whatever else so yes gas chromatography is used extensively in forensic testing very very good question <laughs> how do you come to know which sample needs what type of preparation uh, the simple answer to that is uh, simple answer to that is try it on the gc system okay the more systematic answer to your question is you identify what is the aim of the new analysis ka method are you looking to identify are you looking to do purity checking are you looking to do you know what are you looking to do uske aim of the experiment ke anusar you will check uh, check if it is polar if it is volatile see if the flow rate should be higher if the mobile phase should be helium or if it should be nitrogen kis mein behtar it will dissolve okay miscible sorry uh, and of course check out the pharmacopeia other people have done this research figure it out but after doing all of that also the systematic approach of method development the only way you will actually know is you have to try it on the system yourself then fine tune to get better results Mukta is asking, can gas chromatography be used for purification of mixtures? Uh, so this is a highly controversial question uh, because it can be used in some cases, and in some cases it is a destructive method. So uh, Mukta, what I will leave it this question. The easiest way that I will answer it is it depends on the application. Liquid chromatography. has been used in the industry for purification for years and years maybe decades okay but gas chromatography it is still being questioned so yes the answer is like yes and no both <laughs> depends on the application next question oh you're very welcome any other mixtures or samples or things that you can think of 
the question is can oxygen be used as one of the carrier gases uh siddhi not really uh the main reason being if there was oxygen and hydrogen in the same chamber it would cause an explosion that is the main reason why oxygen is not pure oxygen is not used zero air can be used nitrogen is used helium is used but since gc uses uh, hydrogen as the flame um flaming gas that is why oxygen cannot be okay you were question what will be an example of where uh, gc cannot be used is that right okay where gc cannot be used elements if you want to check ki bhai isme kitna sodium hai kitna uh, kitna mercury hai any kind of heavy metal analysis gc cannot be used any kind of non volatile uh, any kind of non volatile uh, samples that if they just don't volatile if they are just not volatile if you want to check ki bhai paracetamol mein kitna paracetamol hai gc is not the right kind of analytical technique if you want to check the heavy metals that we spoke about intercouple plasma icp is a better technique is the most appropriate technique gc will not help at all so in literal sense anything that you are looking to do which is not volatile in nature gc will not be the right analytical technique to be used can we use it for air pollution if you are looking for specific if you have harsh if you've collected um, okay if you've collected soot out of a uh, car's exhaust okay for checking for the quality of soot you will have to use hplc okay however if you want to check the petrol okay ki you know sometimes uh, people are selling some areas or some petrol pumps are known ki bhai yahan se petrol nahi bhera na adulterated petrol aata hai so if you are using petrol uh, if you want to check the quality of petrol ki bhai wo air pollution mein kerosene wagera ke sath adulterated aata hai kya jiski wajah se air pollution zyada hota hai to that analysis you can do on gc but if you want to check by product then it might not be suitable or if you have used a certain sponge where you've collected uh, you know an absorbent material where you've collected air out of a certain place uska you want to check then gc is suitable so depends what is the application of air pollution uske basis pe gc may or may not be suitable um referring to the carrier gases do inert gases hold an upper hand uh what i would say is yes they do the most important criteria for a carrier gas is its miscibility with the sample let's go back to understand what is the role of a carrier gas we will be able to understand this in that in better okay right here. so the carrier gas takes the sample and goes into the oh sorry just i think you can't see this just a minute let's go back to understand what is the role of the carrier gas the role of the carrier gas is to take the sample through the columns okay so the most important criteria for deciding the carrier gas is number 1 it should be inert number 2 or it should not be highly flammable and second is that it should be uh having the high miscibility with your sample the volatile component of your sample based on this criteria you will be deciding what will be your uh, carrier gas which usually nitrogen zero air and helium you know they offer this entire polarity ka wide range so if nitrogen mein nahi ho raha hai to very high chance helium mein to ho jayega wo miscible your sample i hope this was helpful madam
any other questions so uh, students in case you all think of any other questions please feel free to please feel free to reach me on my email address or my contact number which is here on your screen or right here okay um okay there is one more question i will just answer this uh can we use it in human decomposed material yes you can so if you want to check uh, again in forensic or at any other point in time you want to check um, in human decomposed material if a certain um, person has had been um, ingesting poison okay ya fir urea kitna hai so for that uh, based you can use the human feces or human body ka some tissue to be analyzed for urea or any other poisonous material and based on that you can find out so uh, because both that is um, volatile in nature next question is is gc applicable for pesticide analysis yes this can it is used extensively for pesticide analysis uh, because a lot of pesticides are volatile in nature so if you want to check if your apple or pear has been um, sprayed with pesticide gc would one of be one of the preferred techniques any other questions so i think there is no more question Okay, I think we'll just end the session. I'll just go ahead and thank you. Uh, taking this opportunity is always beautiful to have you here. I have this. I think this is the third time or second time I'm listening to you. It's always very calm and very nice, and students are always engrossed. In uh, I from Patkar Varde College, Department of Microbiology and Biotechnology. Thank you for your time and your knowledge. Please do keep coming and sharing your knowledge with us. Thank, thank you, you so much for this opportunity. <laughs> yes students i'll be posting the feedback link right here uh, so please fill it up and uh, and submit it all right thank you very much uh, wish you all the very best and if you all have any further questions maybe later on just feel free to email me or uh, wish ever really reach out to me and let me know Yeah thank you ma'am